there are some general notes about the religion of Europe. Uh, basically, the northern part of Europe is Protestant. Lutheran is a predominant religion of the northern part of Europe. The southern part of Europe is particularly Roman Catholic, especially when you look at places like Spain, France, Italy. Uh, Orthodox, Orthodoxy is typical of the eastern part of Europe, Russia, Greece. Atheism is common. There are a lot of Europeans that just have no religious beliefs whatsoever. Uh, trends of Europe include techno music. Fast beats, very loud, repeating of words over and over again, lots of laser lights, maybe some foam, such as here on the left. This is a club in Belgium, I believe. Like the United States, Europe has a lot of migrant workers, people that come from other places in the world and work in Europe. A lot of Kurds, which is a people group in northern Iraq and southern Turkey, live in Germany. Uh, Indians, like not the Native Americans, but the ones from India, live in England. A lot of those live there. Uh, Jamaicans, you'll find Pol Polish people. Poles live in England also. A lot of Africans end up moving to France, Algerians particularly. Uh, you see some different people protesting on the right down there about Sri Lanka, but they live in London. Public transportation in Europe is very good. Uh, typically you can find a bus or taxi. Uh, a lot of cities are walking cities. You could also travel them by bicycle. Or you can do what's here. On the left, Paris's Tube. On the right, London's Underground. Two very popular subway systems. Just looking real quick at the economics of the whole deal, up at the top of this chart, we have the 10 richest countries in the world in 2011, measured by gross domestic product, the amount of money made in the country per year. And down at the bottom, if the size of the country was determined by gross domestic product, how much the country made in a year. As you can see, Luxembourg, right there on the bottom section on the left, Luxembourg has one of the highest GDPs of any country in the world. It has a lot of banks. Next to it, obviously, is Kuwait and Qatar, which are two Arab nations. A lot of oil. Then Ireland. You see Norway down at the bottom down there, along with, uh, well, the other ones, uh, Switzerland over there on the right. These are all European countries that make a lot of money per person or in the country as a whole. The lingua franca or language of business of Europe is English. This sign right here is in Switzerland. And as you can see, it's in German, it's in French, it's in Italian, and finally in English. And if you go to Switzerland, the of the four official languages of Switzerland, three of them are German, French, and Italian. The fourth is actually Romanish. But English, you see this sign is in English, and a lot of people in Europe speak multiple languages, among them English, because it is the language of business. Bicycling is a massive hobby in Europe. And a lot of cities have bicycle parks just like this, where you can park your bicycle like you would a garage in any major city here in the U.S. Arts and museums are massive throughout Europe. Every city has its own particular art museum, that uh, displays art from the local artists throughout history. This one is in Madrid, Spain. Music is another big popular cultural phenomenon that goes throughout Europe. Here we have the Beatles on the left from England, and on the right is Beethoven, who's from Austria. One of the other trends of Europe is negative birth rates. So think of this chart like this. This charts children per couple. So if a couple, if a country is to maintain the same number of people that the country currently has, each couple has to have two children. As you can see, Germany, Japan, China, and France 
are all below the two children line. The United States is just above it. And the world as a whole has, from 1960 to 2009, declined from roughly five children per couple to about two and a half. So these countries, like Japan and Germany, are slowly losing population if you look at just the people that live in the country because the Germans and the Japanese are having less children than their ancestors were. So the population is declining due to the fact that less people are having children or they're having less children. Another big uh, phenomenon in economic geography is deindustrialization. You see this old factory here. This old factory used to make uh, guns or tanks or something, but over time these factories have moved to other places in the world. They've moved to China or India or the Ukraine or somewhere else, but not in these places. And the same thing is happening in the United States. A lot of what the United States used to make is now made in either Mexico or Brazil or Argentina or Singapore or Taiwan instead of being made in our own country. It's a form of deindustrialization. We are losing our industrial creations. Uh, looking at the amount of money, and this is in some weird currency, but you can see the orange are the rich countries. You see Germany, uh, France, and the United Kingdom in orange. The further you go to the east across the right, you see more of the blues. So the countries on the left or the west side of Europe are richer, typically, and the countries on the east side are poorer. So you find a lot of people moving from Eastern to Western Europe to get better jobs because they pay better. Europe is also known for their small cars. You have the Renault, the Peugeot, the Mini Cooper, and the VW, the Volkswagen. They all make small, sporty, hatchback cars, which get great gas mileage, but also have good performance, good motors. So Europe is, is particularly known for having good, small cars. Also, Europe is known for its high-speed rail. Um, France, in particular, has a really good high-speed rail system where trains can travel up to 200 miles an hour as opposed to the United States where our commuter trains only travel about 79 miles an hour. Citizenship is difficult to obtain in most of these European countries just because of... Uh, many of the provisions that these European countries have. So you see these people here are protesting because they can't become citizens of Germany. <coughs> so what they're doing is, is they're protesting because to become a citizen of Germany, you have to live in the country for a long time. You have to go through all these different tests. You have to jump through a lot of hoops, fill out a lot of paperwork. And these people are upset because they live in Germany, but they're not Germans. Socialism is a hotly debated issue here in the United States, but in Europe it's mainly understood that they are socialist societies. And what that really means is that the government provides a lot for the people. As you can see, tax rates up at the top. Sweden, 62% of their income is tax. Uh, is of their income is tax. But Sweden has excellent education systems. Sweden has terrific health care. Sweden has a lot of provisions. So if you need to go to a hospital in Sweden, you just walk into a hospital in Sweden, they check you immediately in. You don't have to fill out all these different things and have a, a background check of your finances first before you have something done. It's just done. You see the other countries of Europe, Belgium, Britain, Germany, Italy, France, uh, Russia, Switzerland, all have fairly good or fairly high tax rates because these countries provide a lot for their people. Europe also has great women's rights. Several countries in Europe have female presidents, such as Finland. This woman, strangely enough, looks a whole lot like Conan O'Brien, which is kind of scary. But 
The fact is, is that there are several women who are leaders of countries in Europe. Europe is also crazy about what they call football. We call it soccer. And they have national teams, like the Dutch have a national team, Germany has a national team, England has a national team, um, but then there are also club teams which play in the leagues of each country, like we have Major League Baseball. In Major League Baseball, they have several teams around that play in different cities. Same thing with Major League Football, I guess you could call it that. Uh, the best leagues are in Italy, Germany, Spain, and uh, England. England, probably the best league. Uh, the Premier League is what it's called, and there are many cities that have teams, like Manchester has a couple of teams. Liverpool has a team. Uh, Chelsea, which is a suburb of London, has a team. But there are multiple professional leagues and professional teams, and they pack the stadiums out with seventy or 80,000 people. They have chants. It's a really big party. They usually dress in the colors of their team. Uh, hooliganism is a group fighting, and it sometimes happens when they follow their football teams.